Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and this is a Manor Lords patch update. Yeah, greetings from the realm, and welcome to our channel. It's patch day, patch day Tuesday, May 21st, 2024, and we're getting the latest and greatest experimental patch. That is 0.7.965. There's a lot of really good, good changes that came out with this patch. If you didn't see it, we'll just leave a link down in the description below, but make sure to check in on that, and let's jump right on in. A bunch of things we need to talk about today, the first one being militia squads. Now you have the ability to hire six full squads, regardless of whether or not you have a retinues and mercenaries already in place. So that's great news. It just kind of circumvents the tap dance you had to do in getting those squads in place and then hiring your retinues and then having your mercenaries. So it allows you to really build a bigger army when it comes right down to it. You can create a force that'll help you defend your lands against larger bandit raids and also that showdown between you and other, say, larger entities in the game. Item number two, sheep breeding. This one was hit by the nerf bat, and this one was capped at one new sheep every 10 days for a grand total of 36 now sheep throughout the year. This is still a lot, but it helped cap kind of a little exploit that was going on being used to line your coffers with uh, funds by selling oodles and oodles of sheep. No longer do we have an exponential progression, but it's truly a straight line linear type model at one sheep every 10 days. Lots of sheep still out there. Number three, farming. Now, there are some major changes to farming in this patch, and I'm really happy about that, especially with my uh, Eden Plains episodes, because we have a lot of great fertility in that area, and I'm doing a lot of farming to start things up. Now, some big fixes. One was to the crop rotation. That is going to make farming a lot more automated. You know, uh, one of the challenges that we've had early on is that farming has been a kind of a micromanaged type game, and now with the new crop rotation fixes, that should make things a lot easier. The fertility rates were doubled, which is great because now you can set up a crop rotation of crop, crop, fallow, and you'll be back to your original fertility in no time following that fallow year. So this is a really nice regen. Also, as part of that, the sheep fertilization is even more powerful than before. Just a little bit of number two makes you go a long, long ways, apparently. And then they slowed the growth rate by 30%. So this is going to be a little bit more synced up with both the summer and winter growing seasons. So you're going to have to do a lot less micromanaging and forcing early harvesting and so on and so forth. So I think it's just a better timing application for the farming. And then those crop yield estimates are going to be a lot more accurate. So that's a good fix. Moving on to number four, barter and trade. So now traders who are on foot can carry five units instead of one. This is kind of a big deal. It seems like all of those backpacks are finally coming in handy. And they probably discovered they had pockets. They can carry more than one unit at a time. That's great. Also, new trade route costs have been scaled back to a linear progression and not exponential. This is another key development here, and this should make opening up more trade routes a little bit more attractive and affordable for you as you want to build out a trading empire across all of your regions. Number five, the king's tax. Oh, this is a big one. So in years one through five, there will be no taxes. And this one kind of surprised me when I did the last patch update. I jumped out of the gate, loaded the patch, and walked into the game and got slammed immediately with king's frowny face because I hadn't paid my taxes yet. So for years one through five, there will be no taxes. Years six through 10, it's one treasury coin per citizen. 11 through 15, it'll be two coins per citizen. And years 16 and beyond, it's three treasury coins per citizen. So this is going to incentivize you to grow your village. Village. No longer will you be stuck bearing the burden of these massive taxes as your village continues to grow. This will also be a nice incentive for you to start new games too. Fun. Number six, markets. There is going to be a much better distribution curve for variety within those marketplaces. No longer are you going to have six firewood stalls and only one food and one clothing stall. What that will allow us to do is just kind of even out that distribution a little bit more within those uh, within those marketplaces and you won't have overzealous firewood dealers <laughs> clogging up all the marketplace stalls. The next big update in markets is the market stall setup toggle. You can turn off the ability to have a given burgage or a building construct and maintain market stalls. This is huge and this should lead to much better representations for supply chain within the game. And what I mean by that is no longer are you going to have your primary producers spending time in the marketplace distributing their goods. No, your producers can now flow to a distributor, which would be your storehouse or granary, and then flow on to a marketplace so that you know, your supply chain looks a little bit more realistic. Also, both storehouses and granaries at the start will have three families that you can assign to them. And as you expand them to large configurations, they'll both allow a six. On to growth rates. 
all growth rates have been reduced by 30%. So this is going to bring down slightly the imbalanced nature between vegetable gardens and the relationship to farming crops, i.e. just bring down the, uh, the vegetable productivity a little bit more so that farming actually has a, a better chance of being kind of more of a dominant resources in those areas where you have fertile land. And that's I think that's a good thing, just generally speaking. And then tree growth. Tree growth coming down by 30%. This is going to mean forester huts will become extremely important. And why I say that is because it'll be really easy for you to clear cut your entire region and all of a sudden find yourself without timber and planks. So forestry hut and forestry maintenance is going to become an important part of the game. Make sure you stay on top of it. Manage your forests or you simply won't have any. And then last but not least, cosmetics. Really cool here. If you select the green lady in the character setup menu, you will now have an in-game lady and not a lord. And this is great. This is a fantastic addition for those players who are looking to have a lady or maybe even a baroness or dare I say even a queen. Well, that's going to wrap up this patch update. Be sure to tune in this Thursday for our next episode of Manor Lords and keep checking back to the channel for all the other exciting bits and pieces of information. All right, until next time, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.